Hey, it's Dave Brown here, host of Now with Dave Brown on AMI. Check out this latest highlight from the show. Level Playing Field debuted its fourth season this week. AMI celebrated the launch with a private screening of the show. So private, I wasn't even invited. The event took place at the Miles Nadal Jewish Community Centre in Toronto. Alex Smythe was there to take it all in. Hey, Alex. Hey, Dave, how's it going? I'm good. I was invited. I just I just chose not to go. I don't do evening events uh, <laughs> during the work week. I wake up too early. Alex, uh, before you get into the new season, how'd the event go? The event was phenomenal. You know, it, it was a, a great turnout. There were a lot of representation from different organizations, from uh, para, uh, para-athletic organizations, from Parasport Ontario to the CPC to members of AMI were there and, and other members of the media. So it was a great event to get lots of exposure on a great series that I've been fortunate enough to work on in the past and and see my former team continue to work on now. So it, it was great. And uh, the event was also, uh, you had a screening of a full episode plus some features of other upcoming episodes. And then after that, it was a panel discussion with CBC's Devin Haru. So it was a full evening of different things and activities going on. Cool. Yeah, Alex, uh, you definitely had your fingerprints in the inception of that show. Like the, there still is some fingerprints of Alex Smythe in Level Playing Field. The new the new episodes roll out on Tuesdays. What uh, struck you? What did you like about what you saw so far from the latest season? Well, I think we just get to really dive into the lives and the stories of some of these athletes just a little bit more. You know, we can, they they started to get more creative and, and more colorful and where they were able to really capture athletes in, in their elements. Like for one of the, the athletes that uh, were profiled that were at the event, uh, Brianna Hennessy, she is a paddle sport athlete. So she does a para kayak and para canoe. And being able to be out on the water with her and, and just see as she like just goes through the waves like nothing and, and just picking up great speed, that, that is something that, you know, I, I know the team really had worked to get more involved with, get more of those shots, those those beauty shots, as we like to call them, that you just, there's that beauty in the, in the simplicity of just seeing mm. an athlete go full a speed on the water in their element, and that's really what they've been able to capture this season. All right on. Well, you had a chance to interview Paralympian Greg Westlake, who's number one, a tremendous guy, number two, the host of the show. Let's dive into that conversation. Greg, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. Right, so, okay, it's season four of Level Playing Field. This has been something that you've been involved with since the beginning. What are you excited for fans to experience with this new season? Well, I'm, I'm excited because I think this season we took it to, to new levels it's never been before. And when I first came in, I was an active athlete. So when I came in, I was hosting, but that was it. I would show up the day we were shooting. I, I would read my notes, and I would do my best because I, I really believe in what we're doing here and the athletes that we feature and the organizations that we feature. I believe in it. So I would do my best. But now it, I, I get to really sink my teeth into it. I, I get to really help choose some of the stories we do. We got to travel all over Canada. AMI has been such a great partner for us. We went to Comox Valley in BC. We were out to Montreal. We'll get to the East Coast next season. But we got to really travel and get all the athletes that we really, really wanted to get this season. And I just think it makes for better TV because we're not just Ontario-based. We're not just Toronto-based. We are now a nationwide program program and I think that's really exciting because no story is being left untold. Okay now dive a bit deeper into that you talked about getting across the country all the different locations what about the sports what are the sports that you got to really dive into and explore this season that maybe you haven't in previous seasons? You know it's a great question because I come from a team sport background so when you look at some of the athletes we feature and the, and the community organizations that we feature it's stuff that I don't know a lot about. So some of these interactions you see with me on camera are so genuine. You, you know, Marissa Papa Constantino is going to be here. She, uh, we did a big feature on her in sprinting. I know nothing about sprinting. We had a great chat on camera. I hope that comes out and comes through and shines through. Uh, Brianna Hennessy's here. She's somebody that acquired a disability later in life, something that I know nothing about. She, she is just this kick butt woman who, who is now like a leader in, in her field and I can't wait to tell her story. Um, all these things. So for me, just being from a team sport background and coming in and interviewing these people and 
it's really had a profound impact on my life and the way that I just view my day-to-day -day life. So it's been really, really fun. And I've learned so much about the other sports, whether it's sprinting, uh, Tyler Turner, uh, we went out to Comox Valley and interviewed him. He just came second on the Amazing Race Canada. You know, he's an amazing guy. And almost more than the sports that these amazing athletes and people compete in, it's who they are as people away from their field of play. And that's what we dive into as well. Are they family people? Are they involved in their community? And, and it's a resounding yes, mostly. It's a lot of people that are so connected and have roots all over Canada. And that's what I think shines through. And so again, you look at Tyler. He is a snowboard champion for the Canadian Paralympic team. But what you don't know is that he's this crazy skydiver that just wants me to jump out of a plane with him five minutes after I land on the ground in BC. And so tune in and find out if I jumped out of a plane with this man. Yeah, I was gonna say, don't give the spoilers yet. You gotta give the fans something to tune into. Uh, so you kind of talked about it off the top, but how has the show evolved or grown over the now four seasons? Well, again, a great question. I, I think for us, streamlining our process and I'm just a face and, and I talk to people and I ask crazy questions but the people behind me Ted and Matt they're, they're so passionate about parasport they're so passionate about helping people grow their brands and become successful it makes my job easy I get notes and I get questions and I get sheets with all these details from an amazing team of people behind me that are so into this project this is a passion project it's a labor of love and now we get to share it with the world and we can't wait now obviously uh, uh ted and matt ted cooper the show's uh, producer and matt mcgurk the show's director of photography you're referencing there in in terms of what happens next how do you want to see this show grow evolve and where do you want to go next with it well, I just want to keep going. Um, there's always, as a lot of people would know with sports, there's always the next person coming. There's always the next superstar. There's always somebody that's pushing the boundaries, doing something that's never been done. And we want to find those people. And so as we know with sports, it's perpetual motion. It's constantly thriving and evolving. And that's why we need to keep going. And that's why we need season after season after season is because these stories write them, they don't write themselves, but there's always people coming. And, and I, I would hate to stop doing this show and then all of a sudden we miss out on some great charitable donation, some great charitable act, some kind of groundbreaking Paralympic performance. Like these are amazing things that we need to capture in Canada and we don't do a good job of it right now. And so we're here kind of raising our hands saying, we'll capture it, we'll do it. And, and so that's why it has to keep going. The people that this show touches and impacts is quite profound. The people who love this show, they don't just love it, like, like they swear by it. And, and the messages I get on Instagram and social media, it, it inspires me to keep going every day because it, it really does change people's lives and it gives hope and inspiration for so many people. Now, I know you're very busy. One last question before you go. If you had to choose one story, one profile, one athlete this season, who was the one that really stood out to you? Oh, that's, you can't do that to me. Um, there's a lot. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to answer that directly, but I'll, I'll give you one that I was, I was so pumped to do because I, I grew up, um, I, lo I used to love jujitsu and kickboxing when I was a kid. So I loved it. I used to go, like, every week I would go. I have a blue belt in jujitsu. I, I was like, I loved it. And so we got to feature somebody who really has no connection to the para world this year, uh, a fighter out of Alberta named Jake Peacock. Does not play any para sports, really doesn't know anything about the Paralympic movement, but he's in this brutal combat world fighting other able-bodied athletes, and he's at a disadvantage. And so that was one for me that, that was really interesting because I'm used to interviewing and being around people that just know so much about the Paralympics and the IPC and, and the CPC and everything that I know about. And he really pushed me outside of my comfort zone of, no, this guy just is trying to make it in a brutal, brutal world. So that was a real fun one. That's one that I would recommend checking out as well. Greg, thank you so much. Appreciate you. Take care. That's Alex's conversation with Greg Westlake, the host of Level Playing Field. But Alex, you didn't just speak to Greg while you were at this event. You've got a couple more interviews to roll out here over the course of the next couple of weeks. Who'd you talk to? 
Yeah, so uh, Greg uh, kind of teased him in, in the interview. Uh, Marissa Papaconstantino, who is a para sprinter, she was at the event. I got to catch up with her and kind of talk about her career and the highs and lows that she's experienced from injuries to disqualification from, and, uh, uh, from the Paralympics to actually getting through, meddling at the Paralympics, setting personal best, and, and really achieving those highs after struggles earlier in her career. And then I also got to catch up with Brianna Hennessy, who I mentioned is a multi-sport athlete. She started in uh, wheelchair rugby, then kind of discovered paddle sports. And within a matter of months, she went from never having been into a canoe or a kayak to qualifying for the Paris Paralympics. So it's really fascinating to have both those conversations and, and see them go in different directions. So uh, audiences will have to stay tuned for those interviews. Right on. Alex, thank you for this. Don't go too far because you'll be back for the weather report after the break. Level Playing Field airs Tuesdays, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time on AMI-tv. You know you can find those episodes on demand on the AMI app after they air. Do you want to dive into more conversations like this? Watch Now with Dave Brown weekdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on AMI-tv or download the podcasts wherever you listen. Do you want to dive into more conversations like this? Watch Now with Dave Brown weekdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on AMI-tv or download the podcasts wherever you listen.